Welcome to the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed Show with your spicy hosts, Tara and Sylvie. We show up every episode to expose, uncover, and share what we know about SEX. This isn't what you find in your typical sex ed class. Juicy sex talk is under-discussed, and we're doing what we can to change that. Sex is evolving. People are empowered more than ever to detach from cultural norms and design the sex life they crave. And hey... If you're looking for more after the show, we invite you to get social. Our Instagram is the.sexed.show, and we would love for you to slide into our DMs. Welcome to the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed Show. In this special episode, Sylvie and I dive into the world of lifestyle and swinger hotel takeovers. Joining us on this adventure is the incredibly talented BDSM educator, Jen, who was my partner in crime at this event. We share our unforgettable experience of attending a takeover without our partners and the workshops we taught. With over 10 years of experience in BDSM and ethical non-monogamy, Jen is the perfect partner to take us behind the scenes of this exciting lifestyle event. We discuss everything from the excitement of meeting new people to the challenges of navigating a new environment. Whether you're a seasoned lifestyle veteran or just curious about the community, this episode is a must listen. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the world of lifestyle hotel takeovers. Welcome, Jen, to the show. (laughs) Hi. (laughs) So happy to be here. I'm so excited to hear about this experience that you've both just had. (laughs) It was so juicy, the whole thing. I bet. The the marks on Tara's uh, legs and bottom certainly look juicy. <laughs> you know, I made, for, I made sure at first that she begged for it. <laughs> I only like enthusiastic consent. They're, they're still pretty, actually, they're like black and blue now and getting itchy. Lots of Annika. Lots of Annika. <laughs> Yes, I just heard about that the other day. I went to like this appointment on Monday and they're like, oh, here, like grab this supplement or something. And I've never heard of it, but I kind of liked it. You've never heard of Arnica? Oh my gosh. Arnica is like a staple for any BDSM closet or if you just have kids, you know, because they constantly bump their heads. But um, another thing that that works amazingly well on bruises, if you if you don't want your bruises, right? Because a lot of people like them and like showing them off, right? But if you if you ever don't want bruises or you know you have a big work meeting coming up and it's just you shouldn't be having bruises in certain places castor oil rub castor oil on it and that will take the bruise away and down really really rapidly interesting okay there we go we're already starting off with some information here folks (laughs) (laughs) the more you know the more mm-hmm. you know. Um, Jen, is there anything you want to share about yourself that maybe I missed in the introduction? I think you forgot to say how amazing I am and wonderful. <laughs> and nah, <laughs> that was a really heartfelt introduction. Thank you. Aww. So who wants to start with what was this event like? What was the event like? And talk talk me through the first day and what were you teaching there and what was the vibe like and just give me a quick uh, quick update of like a day in the life of Tara and Jen at the hotel takeover (laughs) well I can share a little bit about who it was with this was with SOP Swinger Open Poly Lifestyle Productions and the organizer's name is Ying Ying. I haven't attended a hotel takeover with her before. She's asked multiple times and it just never worked out. Um, So this was our first time, both of us going to one of these events. And we were, I was blown away. Like she has a lot of little touches that were really nice that I haven't seen at other events, like maybe Naughty and Nolens, but I mean, that's like 3000 people. So at that level, you're, you expect a little bit more, um, but this was smaller. I'd say about 200 people, Jen. Yeah. Think- something like that. I feel like that's the closest to. Yeah. And there was every day there was stuff going on. There was a clothing swap for like sexy lingerie. We legit <laughs> went to that clothing swap. Like, at least 
20 times like like every like couple hours the first night especially it was like every 30 minutes we were going into this room yeah. and like scoping it out and like grabbing things taking them back to our room trying them on taking them back that doesn't fit or doesn't look good <laughs> I've never seen that at a lifestyle event before and you know when you go to these events you accumulate a lot of lingerie and costumes and sexy wear and sometimes you grow out of it. Sometimes you've worn it, you know, five times and you don't want more pictures with like being in it. And so we both found like probably I would say around five pieces that we really liked and that we took home with us. And I got rid of some of my old stuff too. Amazing. Was it co-ed with their different genders there or? Like mostly stuff for like women, like women's clothing. There was a few things for men, but not many. Mm-hmm. something There's to think about for next time hey bringing yeah. some some ties and some top hats <laughs> some waistcoats maybe <laughs> love yeah, a good waistcoat like the like one of the highlights for me like these little details Tara so right like these little details were so different than any other event I also have been to um and it was so organized and well communicated. I find there's so much chaos with every other hotel event I've ever been to, you know, and these details are so important for everyone to know instead of like people constantly bombarding whoever runs it, you know, with a million questions. It's just like, literally there was like weekly, like two months, there was like weekly emails about information about what to expect at this event and what to wear. And, and she did lives too, yeah. reading up like Facebook lives. People could ask questions. Yeah. And like, I've been to ones in Vegas with Sin City and I didn't, I didn't even get a schedule. I didn't know what was happening. I, oh no way. It was a plush party, not Sin City. Sorry. My bad. Um, And I don't think we even went to a playroom because I didn't even know where they were. I didn't know like what was happening. And like we maybe spent in all two hours every day at the event and you're spending a lot of money. Like these tickets aren't cheap. How how much are tickets for people who aren't in the hotel takeover, the swinger world? What are we looking at in terms of pricing for these kinds of events? Uh, I think for the three nights for the room that we stayed in, a two queen room, I, we looked it up. I think it was like twelve, thirteen hundred, and I'm pretty sure that included your ticket, because we were doing workshops um, that was covered for us, which was really nice. We appreciated that. But like for Naughty Nolens, for example, like to get the four day ticket for that, you're looking at eight hundred and fifty US a couple. So eight hundred fifty each, or just as as a couple for the couple plus room plus travel okay. plus food. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah it so- adds up very quickly. Yeah, it does. And I feel like some of the ones that are happen here, like I feel like it's you know about three hundred dollars, three to four hundred dollars for the ticket for a couple, and then it's about um, like you know one hundred and fifty dollars a night for the hotel. So a lot of people like the the scene here is like quite large in the community, like the LS community. You know, majority of people I feel are you know local, so they don't have to get a hotel, so they actually like. There's only like, I think a hundred rooms or something, not even in this hotel. So it sells out fast just because out of convenience for changing and getting ready and that, but yeah. And so it's quite expensive for what you get. It's, it's an experience, right? Yeah. And I mean, you, can, you can save money and just eat ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> Needs that, to eat. That's an option. <laughs> You could like make your own glory hole and <laughs> have some friends come. come over. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. See, I had to save money on swinger events. We've got all the pro tips. YouTube, how to BDSM, YouTube consent embodiment. <laughs> BDSM on a shoelace budget. <laughs> I find like typically lifestyle stuff is very expensive. Even to go to like the desire resorts, I mean, you're paying way more than you would for a typical all-inclusive. And the unfortunate part is that's not accessible to everyone. So most of the time you you have an older crowd because people like 
who are in their 20s, who are in their 30s, they don't have that much disposable income. And on top of that, they usually have kids who they need to get a babysitter for too. So, you know, like when I went to Desire, it was, we were the young ones. Yeah. And I think, doesn't that also impact things like consent, understanding, and various different attitudes towards sex positivity, which not everyone in the older generation, but a lot of people in the older generation were steeped in sort of sex negative messaging growing up. And some of that sex negative messaging can be very, very hard to shake. How does it feel being the younger generation that grew up in a more sex positive environment interacting with people who didn't? I will say this is the first event I went to where I didn't have any consent violations myself and I didn't see any. It doesn't mean it didn't happen, but I didn't see that and I didn't experience that, which I was really grateful for. Ying Ying does a really great job at communicating that and having house rules that we all have to sign and agree to. Um, I did do a consent workshop and I will say it was all people our age, like, you know, 30s, early 40s who attended and not much of the older crowd. Which is so, I, I feel like it really speaks to it. Like, I also think that it's like the day might have mattered because when we first arrived the first night, we were like, wow, we are 100% not even close. Like, we are the youngest ones here. <laughs> and we were so awkward. I feel like, you know, like normally if I have like friends around, I am a butterfly I'm everywhere. But like, we were both fish out of water slightly nervous and socially awkward <laughs> and kind of like floating around awkwardly with a much a significantly older crowd. And the whole time I was like, oh my God, this might affect how many people even come to my workshop and, or our workshops. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, my husband, we had, I talked to him on the phone that I, on Thursday night and I said, oh my God, we're like the youngest ones here. <laughs> and he's like, just wait. He's like, the people that are showing up a day early are the people who are not working Monday to Friday, who have a harder time getting time off, you know, who like have kids and it's harder to get babysitters. And so, you know, you have all these elements that are creating it harder for someone to come on a Thursday than a Friday. And so then of course, by Friday, there was by Friday night, there was a whole lot more younger people mm -hmm. around not saying that it's like good or bad to have older or younger, like, cause you know, how vulgar can I be on this? As vulgar as, as, vulgar you, as want. you want. <laughs> okay. So when I fuck old men, I have a great time. When I fuck young men, I genuinely don't usually have the greatest time. And I feel like the education of, of how to get a woman off, is just usually better for the older crowd. So not saying that it's a bad thing. I was just like more uh, concerned about like the workshops and like, you know, what if nobody comes? <laughs> if, no, if nobody comes. To yeah. your team. Versus like, who's going to get me off? You know, like, it's probably going to be your guys. <laughs> the ones that I want to call like daddy, not like granddaddy though. <laughs> Fair. Tell me about the workshops though. So Tara, you gave one on consent. Yeah. You did wheel of consent. What, did, what were you doing? Um, it was more of like practicing how to be like a good taker and kind of going into that realm of the wheel and, you know, how to do that within a consensual environment and definitely notice like the aha moments of um, when somebody's touching for their pleasure, the difference between touching for the person's pleasure versus touching for your pleasure. And so I think that was really helpful and N noticing the difference in that also giving the options for people to go back to their room and like try this on your genitals and take it one step further and then I did a woman's circle as well for people who identify as women most or all of the time and that was really good there was a lot of great discussions and it's just like holding that space and ensuring that uh, everybody gets a chance to talk and that things are confidential and like I don't have to do much work for that just kind of show up and do the intros I mean space holding is a lot of work so don't sell yourself short on that <laughs> thanks it's 
It's interesting as coaches, because oftentimes, you know, we do give a lot of space to our clients to tell their stories and to sit in their feelings and in their emotions. And I know a lot of young coaches can struggle with that sometimes. Like, am I doing enough? Am I, should I be doing more? Should I be saying more? Should I be offering advice or whatever? And actually, you know, like one of the biggest skills that we learn as somatic sex educators is how to just hold that space delicately and skillfully and allow whatever arises to arise. And so you did plenty, Tara. I'm sure that those women and people who mostly identified as women felt very honored and proud to, you know, be in that space where they could could just be who they were and express what they wanted while feeling gently held mm, and allowed. You. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I mean, like we did a panel on sexual health and there was, I didn't get an option to talk lots because there was one person who was kind of like overtaking the conversation a little bit. And we, Jen and me discussed that after, but I, I get what you mean. Like it's, hearing that everybody wants to share too and you don't always have to have a response and you don't always have to have something to say and I think I noticed that going from the woman's circle and then going into that panel and I was like oh this is so different than what we just experienced and I think it's like the difference like when 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 you see um people who have been in circles before who are or who know not to finish other people's sentences not to interrupt um, not try to summarize how people are, um, you know, feeling or anything. Like, I feel like we constantly go to this summary thing because that's what we've been taught for so long. But like, with what intent other than to show or prove that you're active listening or to actually have a conversation? So I think that just to say also, your workshop on consent was amazing. And, you know, I have seen you you know, I've seen you do this work before and it was really inspiring, even like, like not even I had aha moments and I was excited to go home and be like, okay, babe, I want to do this. <laughs> and I tried to explain it to him, but he just didn't really understand what I was trying to explain. And so it wasn't really that great, <laughs> but we'll get there. Well, it's, it's a hard shift to uh, switch your mind to thinking of, you know, taking pleasure from another person. Yeah. Like, like your touch is pleasing you. And I think that that was such a shift for my brain to try to understand, like, I can get pleasure from touching someone else. And like, this is what brings me pleasure when I touch you versus like, always so focused on giving, giving, giving as a BDSM person, you know, that is constantly either giving and, you know, rarely taking, it was, it was kind of like a trip for my mind. And it's also goes to like that people pleasing instead of just like dealing with something actually verbalizing in a safe way without the need to explain further, just yes or no. And like, so you did this exercise where you talked about if you take like turns or whatever, and correct me if I've gotten, gotten this wrong from recall memory, but, and you just say to each other, like, I want this, I want this without any like need to reply or to feel yeah. like you give it just like, I want this. And I was like, that's powerful. And what a way to set you up to just do that exercise where it doesn't even have to be about sex. It can be about like, I want to do the laundry. I mean, who does want like that was a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat ice cream or whatever. And then taking that energy and then explaining your sexuality instead of like letting it like, oh, I, you know, I got so much from that class. Aww. I could go on about just that class. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. It's it's a challenging thing to embody. Remember, I did 16 classes over eight weeks to d literally embody and understand the wheel of consent. And it took me practice with clients to learn how to regurgitate that information in a way that people get that aha moment too. It's a lot. There's a lot of layers. And this is why people sometimes have challenges with consent and boundaries. For sure. Jen, when you said you're a BDSM person, so you're used to always giving 
explain that to me. Like, are you a top? Are you a bottom? And what does giving look like to you in a BDSM context? Oh my God, you asked the greatest questions. <laughs> she does. Um, like, juicy, love it. Um, so I am a switch. Uh, I am I call myself like an 80-20. I'm 80% submissive. I'm a collared submissive. Um, so I have a couple of doms in my life, uh, daddy doms. And so that looks like for me is just, you know, I, I'm typically giving, you know, my body, myself, my choice up for their pleasure, um, which I love to do. That brings me pleasure, giving them pleasure. Whoa, that just dawned on me. Trip B. <laughs> Sorry, I just made the connection of your class in that. Anyways, so then, you know, 20% of the time I am an I am a, a top, I call myself, or you know, you could say like dominant. I like I like to play with like slaves, like especially male slaves. That's super fun for me. And I also love to teach and educate other DOMs. Um, I'm pretty a, a, a pretty sadistic dominant. <laughs> really? <laughs> she begged for it she begged for it it's I'm always so good when they her. beg I'm a dominant too probably more 80 20 switch towards being dominant than towards being mm-hmm. submissive mm-hmm. and begging yes. is a is a real weakness for me but then I also have like an audio kink so like just hearing any kind of begging or moaning is like an immediate turn on Love right. that. Yes. So you get it, you know, like yeah. and half the reason why I became a dominant was because I was so fucking sick of people doing it wrong as a, like, as I was the submissive. And I'm like, if I could teach all the things that my doms fucked up before, this is what I'll teach. And I have made an, a multiple classes about literally how not to fuck up or what I wish my doms knew. Amazing. What do you wish your doms knew? What do you teach? Like well, the one I really have, I really find um, enjoyable for me to teach is called Impact Play for Pleasure. And essentially it is, I go through an entire scene. So I start from the the gecko about what consent looks like, what negotiations look like. I have a fairly extensive negotiation list. And so I always leave it for people, like if they really wanted it, they could reach out to me because I could teach an entire class on negotiations alone. I could also teach an entire class separate from negotiations of negotiations that are MS related. So how to fuck with your bottom. Explain, explain MS, what that stands for, for oh, people who don't sorry. know. Uh, master slave. Yeah. Um, and so anyways, impact play for pleasure is where I like, I go through the negotiations, the consent, and then um, I go through all these little pieces, like how to negotiate and have a mutual goal for pl- for pain, you know? And I feel like that's like one of the biggest things that I talk about. And so, you know, weeks before I had asked um, Tara, what was your pain score? And she said six or seven. Yeah. And I wouldn't <laughs> let her change that. So like if she had come up to me the next day and or like like uh, uh, the day before the class, or whatever, she's like, actually, I want to do like an eight or a nine. I'd be like, nah, you can only take away because <laughs> this is what we had mutually agreed upon. And the second that like you even get to an event. So I don't usually do I don't do like pickup play. So I do I play with people weeks out. I start negotiating because I want to be the least manipulative negotiation possible so I can gain the most absolute consent and the only thing they can ever do is take away like i want less i want less i would i only want this i want you to touch me with a feather I'm like, great love it <laughs> i'll touch you with a feather all you want <laughs> i'll hit it with you so hard <laughs> that's such an important lesson because i think people do think that once they've committed something they're committed to it and to committed to it to enduring to it and it, again, it's something that we we know as somatic sex educators as well. It's so important, that part of the negotiation where it's like you don't up negotiate because of that hormone release, because of that adrenaline in your system, because you can get intoxicated from your own hormones. Literally, you can get drunk off of your own hormones and then feel more disinhibited than you actually are and feel, uh, you know, feel let down afterwards or feel like you crossed boundaries afterwards that you hadn't wanted to cross, even if in the moment you felt great about them, just being aware that your brain chemistry is not in your normal state. 
And so I think that's awesome that you that you talk about not up negotiating and only down negotiating during a scene. But pain is also so subjective. So Ooh, yeah. Tara, when you said your pain level is a six or a seven, Jen, how do you know what that six or seven is for Tara? And Tara, how do you how do you uh, tell Jen in an embodied way what your six and seven is for you? Well, so I negotiate beforehand. It's going to take me this probably about three hits to figure out where your pain score is. And I also start really light, like so light that I know that that's probably going to be a one. You know, I don't start with like a hard hit. I start with the lightest hits because I strongly believe a warm ass is going to be a fun, pleasurable ass. And so you don't want to like, there's two different ways to warm up an ass. It is fast and it sucks and it's shit and nobody likes it. Or, and then you get pleasure faster though. So if you're like having like a quick thing <laughs> or there's the long and slow warm up with quick per- percussion and, you know, light, light hits. So I always negotiate beforehand. Okay. So it's going to take me a few hits to figure out what your number is. And then we'll go up from there. And so Tara. Yeah. Like Jen did a really good job of checking in at the very beginning and then during, and also like near the end when I was getting (laughs) really red, (laughs) but it was just really communicating. And she would check in all of the time. What, what number was that? What was that? What would you rate that one? And yeah, there was a few, there's definitely a few sevens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I purposely went there. (laughs) Especially the same (laughs) fucking spot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know, there's a lot of sadists out there who are like, oh yeah, symmetry. Fuck symmetry. (laughs) In the same spot over and over again. And every single semester that's listening to this who has had impact play knows that that is sucky. (laughs) It's spicy. (laughs) It's so spicy and fun, but also you get the prettiest bruises when you focus, hyper-focus on one spot. What I do with like, with this pain score is I go through it and I go through a wave, you know, I want to, I want to keep them at like a one to two for like a solid 15 minutes. And I'm during 15 minutes of this class, I'm talking about, you know, brain chemistry. I'm talking about negotiation and goals and intention and, how to process pain for pleasure, which is literally like the whole purpose of it. Right. And there is a way where a lot of people who are really scared of pain, like even we were talking to like an older couple about my class and they're like, so what do you do? Just like smack her around. Oh, wow. Nah. (laughs) You know, it's like this whole, like even app, like people who saw us interact afterwards, like there was someone who was actually crying in class, not because of like, they were just literally touched by our connection. And, you know, Tara and I hadn't played before this scene before. So that connection literally is top and bottom. And like, it is so beautiful watching that connection and that trust, that communication. And I'm literally mind fucking Tara with pain for pleasure it's it's a beautiful like flow of the whole class and then I you know I work my way up and then anyways it it becomes this whole thing and then I I literally I like show aftercare I talk about what to do after and you know I also give opportunity for people to want to try out my toys because I have so many I have a wide variety And I even encourage people to bring their toys to my class so I can teach them how to use their toys specifically Mm -hmm. and in a way that's pleasurable because anybody who likes even a pain score level of one can do impact play. Yeah, there's no level that you can't do impact play with. And so when people say, I can't do BDSM because I don't like pain, right? I get that a lot as a a dog. People be like, Yeah, they'll be like, oh, I just, I could never do BDSM. I don't like pain. It's like, first of all, we endure so much pain in our regular daily lives, so much. And we don't actually get the agency or the control over that pain a lot of times. But being in a situation where you have agency and control over pain can feel so different to situations where you have none. It makes a huge difference. That's Mm -hmm. amazing. Tara, what's your safe word? Um, we did the red, yellow, green. Okay. Yeah. I don't I don't even think I used that. 
There was definitely a point when Jen started checking in and I'm like, oh, I'm like, I go into subspace quite easily. I can go into subspace being in an orgy or with another couple and really good sex very easily. So I'm like, <laughs> and she's like, our words hard to form now. <laughs> what does subspace feel like in your body? Mm, floaty, really airy almost. And even the type like I could it I could probably like say yes to anything like it's just super relaxing super calm kind of like being on a low dose of MDMA wow if I'm being honest yeah and Jen do you get a top high <laughs> yeah you should add like some of the bottoms that I played with they say that I have a switch that I literally like they can literally I'm so naturally submissive and I'm, I'm actually quite a hippie in my regular life very chill very like peaceful and spiritual want to touch my body love 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 and then when I switch on my dom side my friends they're always like is your bag of tricks gonna come up now <laughs> <laughs> or like they get excited or whatever but uh, the top high is delicious because it's like, I'm in control. Everything we're doing for this is what I want. And even this next weekend, I have a person coming and I'll be spending time with that person. But that person, you know, I know I'm going to tell them to do whatever I want. And them doing whatever I want is going to give me a high of whatever I want. <laughs> Like yeah, boundaries of negotiations, but like that is a huge window to play with. <laughs> yeah, and it brings like a, a such a high, and and to the point where like you know I usually tell people tops need aftercare too, mm -hmm. and some tops need that like nurturing after. I'm not typically one of those tops that need the nurturing, but I'll do that as part of the scene in my head. And then after I'm done their aftercare, I start mine in my head being like, it's okay. I'm I'm not hurting this person. This person wanted me to do this with them. That doesn't provide me an energy of nurture. It provides me an energy of straightforwardness or a little cold. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's the most helpful thing for you to hear as a dom, as a top, when you're in that come down space? That what we're doing may be societally wrong or frowned upon, but we are consenting adults and we are empowering our use of choice. Yeah. I always like hearing how much integrity my subs feel I have during a session. That always sounds good to me. You know, when I always tell tell the people that I play with that integrity is very important to me as a dom and as a top. And if they ever want to give me a compliment to do with my integrity, that always feels very good. I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I'm also thinking maybe we should switch gears to talk about the dance and the party floor at this event because we didn't attend it the first night we just went to the dance for a few hours and awkwardly like <laughs> we don't know anyone here what do we do and then the second night we definitely went hard and went way past our bedtime which were both baby grandmas yeah like... we like 9 p.m bedtimes <laughs> and so for us to stay up until 1 30 in the morning Pacific. Wow. <laughs> Yes, but it, it like that tells how how much fun we were having. So sometimes what some people will do, there's this thing called the room crawl. And so there's hosts of their own like hotel room and they just fucking deck this out. I'm talking lights, music, there's munchies. And then each room, they have a game to play. So for one, it was like truth, dare or next level. <laughs> <laughs> and next level was next level. <laughs> Give me an example of next level. What was an example of that? Um, ask a volunteer to spank you. Okay. Yeah. I or volunteer to spank someone. <laughs> or like take two people for an adult version of seven minutes in heaven in the bedroom. Okay. What's seven minutes of heaven? Making out or okay. touching or whatever, anything. Like, cause usually seven minutes in heaven is making out for seven minutes. Okay. So adult version. Uh, and then there was one where it was like, spin this bottle and you had to do, if you wanted to, what was on there. Uh, one room had like a motor bunny. Uh, there was like fucking machines. There was a 
female glory hole. Uh, and so you'd go through with this little card and they would stamp it. And then on the other side, you would say who you thought, which room host you liked the most, and then what room you thought was decorated the best. And then they won prizes on the last night. But I thought that was a really nice addition to just having like the dance and then the playrooms open. Because sometimes the playrooms can be a lot for your nervous system, especially if you're new. And so this was kind of a nice segue for people to meet and mingle in a sexier environment where there was less expectations about sex and fucking um, and kind of just having some good old fashioned fun. Yeah. I also really enjoyed how like the the segue, but like other hotel part takeovers I've been to, they just keep the dance party going all night long. And then right. so many people like to, d- to go dancing. They just dance all night long. They don't even make it to the party floor yeah. and they don't even know what's happening up there. <laughs> so it was like, it was, everybody's on the same page. Everybody's going to the same area and the room crawl was a really sexy way. It was like party room foreplay. <laughs> it was We were like the first ones up there. They're like, oh, it gets, it gets funner when there's more people. We're like, we're having, we're having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> we so were wanting to win and it didn't even matter if we got our stamps first or last because no. we just put them in a bin. But yeah. we were like in a rush. We're like, hey, this one. Okay, now we got to go to this one. We were in a rush. I don't know why. Because we want to go to bed. <laughs> and there was a room with like a photo booth and we got like these cute yeah. photos. Yeah, there was a lot of different. The dungeon was fun. We sat and watched some scenes for a while. Yeah, I really like the glory hole. Tell me about the glory hole, about the female glory hole. What was that like? Describe that for me. So these people like made this themselves and it was, so the door to the bathroom, they put up this glory hole and you kind of like slid in and then you could have your feet restrained up, right? So people would have access to your genitals. Um, And then there was a video recorder in there watching the person with a little TV on the front for the person who was doing stuff. And there was this one girl who was like, I I love when things get really dirty and trashy. And I just felt so dirty and trashy sitting next to this toilet, not knowing who was fucking me. (laughs) I'm like, wow. (laughs) So good. Because I was like, it the, it wasn't it was so pretty on like the outside it was like painted nice but yeah, on the wow. inside it was just like you're in a bathroom dirty <laughs> and like and you're in a bathroom and it smells like a bathroom wow it was a trip the person on the outside couldn't really hear the person on the inside especially if like yeah. the school yeah we we had fun there how do you know if the person on the inside doesn't like or doesn't want what you're doing? Like, is there a is there a safe word or something that they can use to to stop what's happening at any moment if they don't want it? I mean, I feel like it's something you'd have to pre-negotiate. We mm-hmm. certainly did before using it. I'm I'm thinking like if you did an X and like said stop, that would be a good way because I was you know really in tune to like what was going on. Mm-hmm. And there is a video recorder, like, so you can see the person. Yeah. Can, no, I don't want this, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty like limiting because you're like strapped in there. You're very vulnerable. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. What was the most exciting thing for each of you at the weekend? <laughs> We're just like giggling. Jen, you got this one? So I had I had a great time bonding with Like it was like a four day sleepover. Okay. Honestly, making friends and connections. That's great. Like I, I love that. And before even anybody knew that we were like workshop people, they were nice to us, you know, like sometimes there's that ego involved and like people want to be friends with the workshop people for some reason, like there's some kind of power exchange there. People were just nice. Honestly, for me, the best part of the whole weekend so if you guys ever get the opportunity to go to a hotel takeover with Tara, you just go, you just never say no to that question and you invest at whatever you can and have four days with Tara because she packs everything that you never knew you needed in a hotel room. And so you could just show up and she's like, I have everything you've ever needed. <laughs> she's like the Mary Poppins of swingers. 
I've been to a few. I know what I didn't even bring everything. Like I'll even bring twinkle lights for the room, which would have been nice for like one of those nights, but <laughs> Tara, I'm thinking we should run a contest now of like if you want to go to a hotel takeover with Tara. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We need to we need to figure out like what we want people to do. What's the call to action if you want to go to the next hotel takeover with Tara? <laughs> It was so good. And what about you, Tara? I mean, there was one other thing, but I feel like it's inappropriate to say on here. <laughs> I haven't been to one in three years. I've been to lots, lots all over North America. Yeah. So just getting back into it. This was also my first one without my partner. It was, it was fun. It was different. And aside from like having to do all of his duties, like carry my own luggage. Ugh. I know. <laughs> the indignity of that. I know. It was, it was really, it was great. And the, I think one thing that was really funny that kind of stood out was the corruption that we had on the one server, the bartender. <laughs> yes. he, like, I don't even think he knew what BDSM was and, and he got our business cards and like things progressed. I, like he started asking questions. It's like, what? There's and a then- whole world of this. That was good. Yeah, what what do the hotel staff know, if anything, about the event that the staffing? I'm sure they're informed. I'm Ying Ying's pretty good with consent. So I'm sure there's like informed consent happening. They also made it so they only swept the 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 room levels once a day to grab any any like they didn't even come into the room because they didn't want the hotel staff to see something that they didn't consent to. So I thought they did a really good job of that. I went and got my sugar the day before leaving. And my sugar lady was like, oh, are you going to like that crazy sex party in Kelowna? I'm like, how do you know about this? And she's like, I had a client come in and I guess it's the talk of the town. And like, I'm in Calgary, I'm in a different city. And this is like getting (laughs) passed around. But for the most part, like the staff, were really friendly. I forgot my passport. You know, I got to the airport. I was like, oh, I forgot my passport in the safe. I had to phone them and they like ran it down to the airport for me, which I was very grateful for. Wow. That's service. The restaurant staff though, the restaurant staff didn't know what was going on because the restaurant was still open to public because this bartender was like, so what's the event? Are you guys going to like tell me? Because he said that everybody else, you know, they asked them, what are you here for? The people in the booth would be like side eye each other and be like, oh, you know, like like little tidbits, like, oh, we're just here for a conference or just like, it's like a, a fun event or whatever. And they would, everybody was being super vague. Then, you know, we did the same, you know, side eye, like, what do we tell them? And then we're like, whatever, you know, like he wants to know. And I said, okay, do you consent to anything that comes out of our mouth right now about what this event is. He's like, absolutely. I'm super open. I'm like, cool. This is a lifestyle poly open swinger event. And he was like, wow. And then, you know, we kind of told him about our workshops and he's like, wow. Mind blowing. Did he want to, did he just want to like get off shift immediately and like go join? Well, yeah. He's like, how do you, how do you get into this? Like, how do you, where are the tickets? He was like, or buy them online. <laughs> He, yeah, he was, he was curious. Definitely. We brought our business cards down after and gave them to him. We saw him follow us on Instagram. He's probably listening to this podcast right now. I know. Probably. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know that, that was pretty, that's fun. I, I love kind of like a little bit blowing people's minds. I like shock value. Yeah. (laughs) So we've heard about what was hot at the event. Was there anything hard at the event? Pardon the pun, but was there anything hard as in challenging or difficult? I think like the nerves leading up to it, like Jen and I haven't stayed in a hotel and done a takeover together before. So like, what does that look like? Uh, I haven't attended an event without my partner before. What's going to happen? I think like all of the what ifs leading up was probably the more challenging scene as I am type A. So I do go through all these stories and like anxiety and before it, that's probably the most challenging for me. Once I'm there, I'm like, I'm fine. Everything's fine. It's just the leading up to it. That's challenging for me. What about you, Jen? I think like the most challenging part is maintaining connections outside of the event because it can be so 
all involving because you're constantly doing stuff. You wake up, you work out, you go get coffee, you go get breakfast, you uh, start getting ready, you go to, we, we were doing like workshops, you know, like there was always something on the go. We were doing the clothing thing. Well, we have to do the cup decorating thing. We have to make our necklaces, you know, like, cause they had name tag necklaces and, you know, there was just all this stuff. But then I also had an entire life happening on my phone and maintaining my connections while also being at an event that not only was I working, but like, you know, that I was with my friend. And it, it, I think that's honestly the the balance in that is probably tricky. But for me, I'm poly. So for me, balancing multiple relationships and multiple schedules and, you know, usually comes a little bit easier, but <laughs> it was a little tricky this time for some reason. It's interesting having phones at these events. Does that I can imagine that that can feel kind of scary for some people as well, that they might not want to have someone take photo or film them or, you know, even just be caught in the background of a, of a picture or anything Mm -hmm. on social media. Are there any particular rules around phones or do most people leave them in the room? What's that like? A lot of times people don't have them with them, but like people also want to take some pictures and stuff. We are very careful about most of the time when we took any content videos or or pictures, it was in our room or like somewhere that was empty. And if you go to hedonism, like you you shouldn't even have your phone with you, especially on on the noon side. There's like a no phone rule. Um, same with desire. Like all these events are pretty strict because people are really nervous about having their faces out there but again we are working and part of our job while we're there is to create content and promote the event so we have to get some content for that yeah it's it's tough it's like it's a fine balance I see like a lot of times you might take a video and then blur out the background so that you can't see faces but from when I got into the lifestyle 10 years ago to now there is I I would say people are way more comfortable there's way more phones I've noticed seen it way more that it's just more of the norm yeah I think people are more out to than they used to be and less unless you're looking for this content like on YouTube like ooh, I'm gonna look up like some hedonism pictures or something how else would you know so you're not gonna have your family find pictures because they're not like looking up for this information. It's pretty fucking niche. Yeah. So what were the main takeaways for both of you from this? And what would you want to do the same next time? And what would you want to do differently? Do you want to go first, Jen? Sure. Same. I would do everything exactly the same. I loved every second of it. The highlights, the dancing and having fun and having a four day sleepover with your girlfriend, having a lot of sexual pleasure. (laughs) Also (laughs) having like, like I love, I love presenting for me. Like it's people can see my passion. And when people approach me after my class and they're like, wow, you can just tell, like, you just love this and you have such an art to it. Like the overwhelming response I had from my class afterwards was it gifts me a a gift that I could never give myself, knowing in myself that yeah, this is what I love to do. But when somebody else reaffirms that for me and gives me some validation, I'm like, oh my God, it's <laughs> give me, give me it, give me it. I want it. <laughs> some things that I might do differently, maybe pack more food and snacks instead of spending so much money on food. (laughs) That's it. Literally. Okay. Yeah. Pack more food, pack snacks. Be a snack and pack snacks. (laughs) Be a snack and pack snacks. Have a snack. What about you, Tara? Mm, Yeah. I don't think I would change. I I would change much about the event. It, It was, I think it went exactly the way it was meant to be. And I had a really great experience I think having one designated night where it's like, this is kind of the go hard night instead of leaving it to the wind and then kind of feeling like fucking shit the next day when I have three workshops, that was not fun. Planning that a little bit better. I think also maybe not trying to manipulate my workshops 
names and description, but like changing it a bit more so that there's more people who are willing to come to them and like, because people hear consent and they're like, oh, I know consent. It's yes, no, ask first. And okay, but this is like so much different. And so maybe trying to change the language of the description of the workshop and even the name of it so that um, there is more people experiencing that. And then also maybe offering a workshop on erotic touch and massage for couples. That's one that I'm like, it's something we do a lot of in our line of work as SSEs. So I feel like that would be really valuable. And also kind of a nice yin and yang for Jen's workshop with the impact for pleasure. And then like the erotic touch and massage for couples. And I think that would be because people like the hands-on stuff too, right? And that's what we're trained to do. Yeah. Yeah. You can use my body however you need to. If, you know, you need help with those those workshops, I just like, yes, I really want to volunteer <laughs> my body for you. Dedicate your body to science, Jen. Yes. <laughs> for education and science. I feel like you should do like a poll on how to reframe your class name because I like I keep like thinking like how to ask for pleasure you know like versus because I feel like like what do what are people ahaing it's not they're not ahaing to consent even though they are right yes there is a connection in our mind that every single person I've ever seen you talk about this with is like wow yes maybe pleasure on your terms (gasps) yeah yeah I should write these down on it Yeah. So I think that would probably be the only things that I would change. Um, And we were invited back to their winter event. So they have the winter lifestyle takeover, hotel takeover in Whistler. And so we'll be there in November and I'll drop a link on the show description so that people can sign up and go. You can come stop us. Apparently it's bigger. There's a lot more people. And as Jen says, if you ever get to go to a lifestyle party with Tara, you should go. So there's there's your chance right there. (laughs) And I think our partners might be coming too. And so they're pretty fun. They are fun. (laughs) And then they can carry our luggage. (laughs) They could provide me snacks. Yes. Remember to record my freaking class. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a big one. They can, they can take the content for us. Yes. We can just exist and be our awesome selves. They just follow us around with a selfie stick. And a, and a bum bag full of snacks. Yes. <laughs> yes. Make our drinks, carry the water. Like, oh my God, there's so many jobs they need to do for us. It's so exhausting. Yeah. And I never got one penis that whole weekend. And I mean, my life would have been a little bit better if I had a little penis in it, you know? This is true. I like both. I mean, I'm happy with both, but I'm we a green saw girl. penis, but we didn't get penis. Yeah. I just want more, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, Jen, thank you so much for joining us today. And Tara, thank you as well for sharing your experience. I feel, I feel very sad that I didn't get to experience this with you, but I felt like a part of it now that, that you've shared it. And that I got to ask all the questions that I wanted to ask about it. So thank you. I mean, Jen, would you like to plug yourself on social media? And where can people contact you, find you, DM you questions? Or do you not want any of that? No, I love it. Um, You can contact me on Why Choose One Podcast on Instagram. It's like my main form of contact. I do have a Facebook. I don't even know how to log into it sometimes. So don't go there. Um, But you can find my podcast. It's called Why Choose One. I have lots of content about, you know, BDSM, polyamory, non-monogamy as a whole, really. I talk about bisexuality and all, all other forms of random ass shit. (laughs) It's essentially like, I get a lot of good feedback, particularly from polyamorous people. If uh, you guys want to reach out there, it's, you can find it on Spotify, Google podcast, Apple podcast, pretty much any normal, typical podcast platform. It's all free, free education. And you can always reach out and ask questions. I love talking about non-monogamy because there's no how to, there's only just a bunch of people who think they got it figured out (laughs) and keep learning as they go and fuck up. Absolutely. Tara, any any last words on the podcast, on today's podcast? No, I think, I feel like 
I feel like I shared everything that I intended to share and I can't wait to do this again. It was really fun. And I'm really happy in re- in retrospect, really happy that this was the event that I decided to go to for the first time in three years. I mean, it wasn't too overwhelming. It was with the right person and yeah, it, it, it all felt really good. So, and I'm happy that Ying Ying is so attuned to her, to her guests and to what they ask for and to their nervous systems, because that my friends is not an easy thing to find at lifestyle hotel takeovers. Mm-hmm. So uh, November 10th to 13th, you should find your way to Whistler. I should find my way to Whistler. And come hang out with us. <laughs> I've I've got to find find out what I'm doing in November, but that sounds like an enticing offer. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, the three of us. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that hotel is ready for that kind of takeover. I'm literally about to crawl on my chair from excitement. <laughs> yeah, that hotel might never recover. The TripAdvisor <laughs> reviews would be kind of wild. Yeah, you're not far. You're just down the coast. We, we have talked about going to Whistler in, in, in winter, haven't we, Tara? So, yeah, we'll see. It's an option. Found chicken <laughs> But on that note, uh, before we get too horny, thank you to all of our amazing listeners for tuning into the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed Show. If you're looking for more ways to connect with Tara and myself, access info or get social with us, you can follow the show's Instagram at the.sexed.show or our individual Instagrams at Sex Ed for the Modern Bed and Sex and Sensibility, where the E in sex is a three. So until next time, claim your pleasure, own your body, and stay in presence. Mm-hmm.